My name is Richard, and this is If You Only Knew. This report is titled, The World is Watching, We Have the Servers, Final Phase. Thank you for joining me this week. For many of you, what I'm about to present will be the confirmation that so many of you have very, very patiently waited to hear for for so long. For many, this has been a very difficult few weeks that has pushed many patriots to exhaustion, and sadly, some have even lost faith. Well, you may want to call up those patriots up on the phone and play for them what I'm about to share with you right here. The following will be a series of highlight clips from Worldview News, which aired on Saturday, November 28th. This is General Flynn's first interview since being pardoned by the president. And I encourage you after listening to this to go and hear the full interview, which you may want to even listen to twice because there's so many powerful confirmations. However, what I believe is most critical is the second half of the interview, which is with three-star General Lieutenant General Thomas McEnry, which will clarify so much. You heard plenty of speculation and theories about what Sidney Powell referred to as releasing the Kraken these last few weeks, but listen to what Lieutenant General McEnry has to say about the Kraken. Now, Sidney and uh, the president, through, I believe, General Flynn, have got the Kraken organization, the 305 Military Intelligence Battalion, working with them. Because in all of this, we have not seen any footprints of the DOJ, of the FBI, nor the CIA on the friendly side. Wait a minute. It's been on the deep state side. Let let me just stop you there, General, because you just said something very interesting. You just said that who has just opened up the Kraken, and then you just described what the Kraken was. We all know the term because of uh, Sidney Powell using it, but you just said what it is. Can you back up on that? Yes. Sidney got the term Kraken, because that's the nickname of the 305th Military Intelligence Battalion. And that has been her source, along with other sources that Mary and I know about, but we don't want to talk about. And so we're, we're getting the different sources that are relaying this. But the important thing is, they identified, now get this, they identified China, Iran, and Russia as being involved in this and manipulating and manipulating the votes. In addition, the U.S. Army, the U.S. Special Forces Command seized a server farm in Frankfurt, Germany, because they were sending this data from those five states or six states through the Internet to Spain and then into Frankfurt, Germany. Special Operation Forces seized those, that facility. So they have those servers. And did, they know all this data they are provided. Did that, by the way, did that seizure go down without incident? Well, I've heard it, uh, it It didn't go down without incident. I haven't been able to verify it. I, I want to be careful in that. It's just coming out. But uh, I understand my initial report is that there were U.S. soldiers killed in that operation. Now, that was a CIA operation. And so that's the, that's the very worrisome thing. Did that occur because of what uh, Mary and I and Alan were notifying on the Sunday and the Monday in different networks that this was going to happen, that they were using hammer and scorecard, and so they decided to bounce it overseas. So the the server farms that uh, hammer and scorecard were using in the continental United States couldn't be used. I don't know that. In any case, it makes it more vulnerable. Uh, because when you start moving that kind of data overseas, other people look at. It. But you are saying and, that was uh, a you are saying that was a CIA facility, and that that was where the server was taken from by these special forces was a CIA facility in Germany. That's correct. Now that's interesting because first you learned of the Kraken, which is actually the 305th Intelligence Battalion and which is a source of the data from Sidney Powell, along with other sources that the general decided to mention, but not to name, which means there's more. By the way, the Marshall Report had stated that Powell is registered as a military lawyer and is the only one who can prosecute treason at a tribunal. The statement was made by Hal Turner on his radio show in the article, but no further information is actually given. 
Also, you did just hear additional confirmation that these Skytel servers in Frankfurt, Germany, were a CIA operation, which were seized by special forces. That's interesting, since we just learned that Ezra Cohen Watnick became acting under Secretary of Defense for Intelligence. Previously, Cohen Watnick was acting Assistant Secretary for Defense for Special Operations. Our favorite Anon did post Ezra Cohen Watnick in post 2057 coincidence. However, this is also interesting because it definitively confirmed that China, Iran, and Russia were involved, which we suspected but now heard from a three-star general directly. Next, the general went into details concerning the various methods of what we know is obvious voter fraud and again provided confirmation on what has been reported with regards to suspect anomalies and mathematical impossibilities. Here's more. And let's start with the vote count distribution in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, Arizona, Nevada, and Georgia are not based on normal system operation. They are caused by fraudulent electronic manipulation of the targeted voting machines. For instance, at 2.30 a.m. on the 4th of November, TV broadcasts reported that Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Arizona, Nevada, and Georgia have decided to cease vote counting operations and will continue the following day. This unanimous decision to initially and intentionally, intentionally stop counting by all five battleground states is highly unusual. As a matter of fact, it is unprecedented and it demonstrates prior coordination by election officials in battleground states, those five states that General Flynn mentioned. And because of this big flashing light to anybody that is under, understands the voting process, it immediately flagged this. And we start looking at each one of those states because they didn't stop counting. All of a sudden, in Michigan, at 4 o'clock in the morning, 138,000 votes show up. All four, guess who? Biden. He was behind in all those states when they decided to cease voting. And that's where they employed the cyber warfare, the hammer and scorecard, plus the Dominion uh, voting machines and the software in them. That's where they put these applications on, like your iPhone, and they got a smooth voting. Now, when the numbers came, started coming back in in those five states, they were different numbers, 138,000 in Michigan, you know, uh, 100,000 or 90,000 in Arizona. These, now, this is notional. A different one in Nevada and Georgia and Pennsylvania. But the important point was they were exactly at the same percentage. This is a mathematical impossibility that this could have happened. And it means an algorithm was used. And this algorithm was designed to stay within the bounds and when the assembled numbers were uh, put together, it wouldn't be obvious that these numbers of votes were inserted. And so this is a huge flashing red light. And it's important that people understand with this kind of data that we're seeing. Some more numbers that are interesting. Sydney pointed out in Georgia that there are 96,000 absentee votes that were disregarded in Fulton County. They had a water leak. Pennsylvania. The state of Pennsylvania mailed out 1.8 million votes to their citizens. The state did. These are not uh, absentee ballots. These are these ballots that have no chain of custody. Lo and behold, Brandon, 2.5 million came back. Now, someone had to have a printing press and were cranking them out. That is just the pure sniff test that doesn't require a genius to understand. If you mail out 1.5 and 1.8 and get 2.5 million back, something is wrong. In the next clip, the lieutenant general explains how this has been used in previous elections, even against Bernie Sanders, and also sends a warning. There are people 
that are part of this conspiracy. This is treason, what we're talking about. Some people may just think, oh, it's just politics. Yeah, all right. So uh, uh, President Obama used it in 2012 to win. He and uh, Biden used it to win Florida. So uh, the Democrats used it during the uh, primary so Bernie Sanders would lose and uh, Biden would win. You know, that's, that, that's politics. You know, we've been cheating. No, it's not politics. This is treason. Benedict Arnold gave away West Point, or tried to, in the Revolutionary War. We haven't seen treason of this magnitude ever in our history. And those politicians, those people, like uh, the head of the, uh, Chris Krebs, who's the head of the Cyber Warfare Infrastructure Security Agency, he was, until he was fired a couple of weeks ago or more by the president because said this was a perfect election. He is guilty of treason. He had to be complicit, and people must understand that. You people that have done this are guilty of treason against the United States, and we are going to demand this president, insist this president not leave office until the American people have had a full a disclosure of what's going on. The interviewer, Brandon House, also details how the Russian collusion narrative was designed as a cover-up and that he received three phone calls to discourage him from presenting this information. The general also explains how the media are complicit and involved in the operation, how this implicates the higher echelons of the Democratic Party. And then the next day, the Russian hoax comes up by Comey, I guess a smokescreen, right? So they've been on this a right. long time. A long time. In general, I received three phone calls from three different people tied to the intelligence arena a couple weeks ago trying to tell me that I was going to be embarrassing myself if I didn't quit talking about this, that it was all conspiracy and fake. And it's now being revealed that those, I guess, were calls to try to get me to stop using our network, our platform, to inform the American people because now we just are starting to figure out what a lot of these words like Kraken and other things mean. And it, it is all coming out that the there are those inside the intelligence arena that were trying to shut this down. Now I think there's some inside the intelligence arena that are trying now to take the story and control it. Are they not? Yes. And they are guilty of treason. Anybody that was complicit. Fox News, in my opinion, some of those people are guilty of treason, whether it's the president whoever it is, because they flipped and they knew what they were doing and they made those early announcements. And so anybody involved with this is complicit in it. If they didn't tell and alert the President of the United States and their proper officials. Do you believe this so goes all the way? Do you believe this goes all the way back up to Nancy Pelosi, to Adam Schiff, to Barack Obama, to Joe Biden? Yes, it had to. It had to. The way they act, the way they did things, everything they've done, the Russian hoax. Now we've got to know if John Durham, what is the status of John Durham and the Attorney General? Bill, yeah. What is the status of their work? What have they done? Now, before we continue, I know that many of you have been asking, where is Barr? Which has been the million dollar question. I came across some interesting articles that I want to quickly share that may answer this question before we continue with the Lieutenant General's interview. First, we come to learn that in the past month, the DOJ planes recently visited Dominion headquarters in Toronto in Atlanta. We also have the flight plans to show this. Now, just because you don't see it on the news does not mean that things are not happening. Remember that this is warfare and that the spoils go to the victor that does not broadcast their actions beforehand. We also come to know that 700 members of a transnational organized crime group have been arrested in Central America with a U.S. assisted operation. We also have a new federal rule that allows for methods of execution other than lethal injection, which is interesting timing given the second article, and also given the possibility that some of the people the lieutenant general has named may be facing very harsh sentences, including the death penalty. Now, going back to the interview with the Lieutenant General, the interviewer, Brandon House, refers back to the executive order on imposing certain sanctions in the event of foreign interference in a United States election, which we've talked about here in the past. Listen to this. 
September 12, 2018, executive order on imposing certain sanctions in the event of foreign interference in a United States election. How much will this executive order by President Trump play into this, and how so? Well, I think, and I'm going to ask Mary to also talk about it, but I think it will play a major role. It tells me, Brandon, that the president knew something was happening and that this was going to come about. And Brandon, can I, can I say one other thing in closing? Yes. Now, this is, going, this is going directly to those that want to seize this country because they have hacked my cell phone. And, and so everything I say on, on this particular channel, open channel, they are copying. They mean business. They are deeply into this. And they now know that because of what you've done and what we've done tonight, that they are in even more trouble. And, uh, and we are coming against after you. The American people are going to come after you. And this president won this election, and he is going to be the president for the next four years. But we're after you. You will not seize this country because this would be the last free election we ever had. And I'm in agreement with you and Mary that Joe Biden should step down right now. Joe Biden needs to concede. Folks, these are American. Now, if it's not clear to everyone, it should be more than obvious that the president knew of this plot and set the stage to expose the fraud with the sanction from 2018. It could also explain the president's cryptic foreshadowing with this recent comment. Mr. President, do you have any big plans for your last Thanksgiving dinner? Well, we don't know what is last. Uh, if you look at what's going on, you have to really take a look at what's going on. Uh, they're finding tremendous discrepancies in the votes, and nobody believes those numbers. Those numbers are uh, incorrect numbers. Uh, a lot of numbers have already been reported that's incorrect. You're going to see things happening over the next week or two that are going to be shocking to people. Uh, if you look Now, the deep state, the mainstream media, social media, the corrupt politicians, all of them are panicking because nothing has gone as planned. Everything has backfired. They thought they would just be able to rely on their system of controlled assets like the tech giants that would censor away any real information while the mainstream media would project and all the politicians would attack the president. Well, nothing has worked out the way they were expecting because, like I mentioned, the president had intelligence from the military, and on top of all that, there's been a series of developments that the deep state just weren't ready for. First, last week... We have had Powell file two detailed lawsuits documenting fraud in Michigan and Georgia that Twitter did initially censor, but you can now post without any issues. If you want to read them, they are on defendingtherepublic.org, but the Epoch Times has a video that walks through 30 of the allegations on the Georgia filing, which, for example, may result in the removal of fake absentee ballots or the seizure of every voting machine in the state. There's also an allegation of bribery, which Powell has the check steps. In the Michigan filing, you could see other examples of fraud, including a 781% turnout in one township. Now, interestingly enough, when Twitter decided to no longer censor the lawsuits and allow them to be shared, since they were already accessible on PACER, which is the Public Accessible Court Electronic Record System, the mainstream media just decided to focus on the type errors, which backfired because it only made people look at the documents rather than ignoring them. Now, on that same Wednesday was the hearing for Pennsylvania. Twitter decided to censor Senator Doug Mastriano by suspending his account for organizing the event to present all this evidence, like this graphic, which showed how over a million additional votes were present. Listen to this clip from Giuliani. You sent out in the state of uh, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania 1,823, 148 absentee or mail-in ballots. You received back 1.4 million approximately. However, in the count for president, you counted 2.5 million. I don't know what accounts for that 700,000 difference between the number of ballots you sent out and the number of ballots that ended up in the count. That number, 2,589,242, was on your government website until yesterday. And yesterday it was removed without explanation. I'm going to be very interested in hearing what the explanation is. And I can't imagine you could possibly certify without knowing the explanation to that, as well as the explanation to the 
22,686 mail-in ballots that were returned on the day they were mailed. That's a trick. How about uh, they were returned, how about 32,591 were returned the day after they were mailed? Another 20,000 were returned <laughs> before they were mailed. Fortunately, the judge halted the certification, ruling that the 2020 election was likely unconstitutional, while new electors are being called for by the GOP, which included 26 House Republicans and eight senators. Now, you know the Democrats are likely panicking after CNN aired this video with Fareed Zakaria to explain how the president could use this as a viable path to victory. Take a listen. File objections to tens of thousands of mail-in ballots. Democrats file countersuits taking account of the confusion. Legislators decide to choose the electors themselves. Here's the worry. Of the nine swing states, eight have Republican legislatures. If one or more decide that balloting is chaotic and marred by irregularities, they could send what they regard as the legitimate slate of electors, which would be Republican. Democrats may object and file lawsuits. In some of those states, Democratic governors or secretaries of state could send their own slates of electors to Washington. That would add to the confusion, but that might well be part of the Republican plan. Because you see, when Congress convenes on January 6th to tally the electors' votes, there would be challenges to the legitimacy of some electors. It's possible congressional Republicans could decide that disputed states should simply not be counted. Suppose in this scenario, Michigan's votes are invalidated, that would ensure that neither candidate would get to 270 electoral votes. At that point, the Constitution clearly directs that the House of Representatives vote to determine the presidential election. But it does so with each state casting a single ballot. If the current numbers hold, there would be 26 state delegations that are Republican and 23 Democratic with one tied. So the outcome would be to re-elect Donald Trump. Senator Doug Mastriano tweeted, there is mounting evidence that the Pennsylvania presidential election was compromised. If this is the case, under Article 2, Section 1.2 of the U.S. Constitution, the state legislature has the sole authority to direct the manner of selecting delegates to the Electoral College. Also, Robert Rohrbach wrote it, I have heard a lot of people gloating that Trump lost in the Third Circuit. Actually, winning would have been a loss because it would have made controlling law in Pennsylvania and only persuasive in the other battle states. Going to the SCOTUS will make it a law everywhere. However, even before this strategy, as the Gateway Pundit reports, the president still had 13 paths to a potential victory versus Biden's 10 ways. But this will all depend on how some of the evidence plays out. And meanwhile, more and more videos are surfacing to question the election's legitimacy. The Gateway Pundit shows five of such videos like this one with the voting numbers changing live on air. Or this one with a recorded conversation showing a phone call to a Chinese manufacturer requesting a bulk order of fake U.S. 2020 ballots. We also have videos of Dominion executive Eric Comer showing how to switch votes and an old video from CNN has surfaced showing their own investigation into how Dominion was involved in the Venezuelan election. In fact, Ron, formerly of HN, showed how Dominion had ties to the Venezuelan government and even Hugo Chavez and that they covered their tracks by concealing the evidence in a fire which destroyed all the voting machines. By the way, regarding Dominion, we've come to learn that Bill Gates also has a tie to Smartmatic. Listen to this. This is Roger Stone. All of the controversy regarding Dominion voting systems is but the tip of the iceberg. Here's the real villain. It's none other than Bill Gates and Microsoft. You see, Microsoft designed a software called Election Guard that's being used by Dominion, as well as Election Services, Heart InterCivic, Clean Ballot, Election Systems and Hardware, B Pro and Smartmatic. In other words, 100% of the voting machines and voting systems in this country are using the same software that Dominion has been caught using to switch votes. The denial by the mainstream media that there's any evidence whatsoever is ludicrous. The evidence is overwhelming and compelling. 
Whether Sidney Powell, a fine attorney who isn't given to making claims she can't back up in court, can bring a case without the cooperation of the Central Intelligence Agency and the FBI to come clean remains to be seen. While Nevada certification has been halted to review voter fraud allegations, there's more and more evidence surfacing each day. In Wisconsin, more than 2,000 absentee votes had been discovered with the same initials, MLW. We also have an interesting development of non-governmental groups filing lawsuits like the Amistad Project. Breaking, Phil Klein, former Kansas Attorney General and the current director of the Amistad Project. We already have suits in six states, but we're filing more based on this new data. A series of decisions at the local level, funded and encouraged by the flow of $350 million of Mark Zuckerberg, which could link Mark Zuckerberg to voter fraud. There's a lot happening, but as Rogan O'Hanley tweeted, we are seeing a major reversal in election momentum and that this upcoming week will be historic. In the meantime, there are other major developments. Carter Page has filed a $75 million lawsuit against Comey, McCabe, Stroke, and the DOJ for illegal FISA warrants. The president has removed 11 of the deep state members of the National Security Defense Policy Board, including Kissinger and Albright. Dianne Feinstein has stepped down as the top Democrat on the Senate Judiciary Panel, which I suspect might have something to do with China, but we'll, we'll have to see. The GSA letter that Democrats were very excited about that the president authorized for preliminary work with the Democrats to establish a transition team actually forces Biden to disclose foreign conflicts, John Reese tweeted. Holy Moses Patriots, buckle up for this. The GSA letter forces Biden to disclose conflicts of interest with himself and his team, including foreign nationals and foreign agents, prohibits a transition team member with conflicts of interest. Trump checkmated Biden. Now, to many, it may not appear that things are happening, but they are. Republican David Valdeo has flipped a U.S. House seat in California's 21st Congressional District. The president has called on Congress to help the decimated restaurant industry revive. In the meanwhile, despite censorship, Twitter is being overrun with support for the president, as Utah tweeted. You know that this movement is much bigger and worldwide when we're snapping Twitter algos with Biden cheated. The system is broken. We're going to tear it down and rebuild. On Friday, Biden cheated got up to about 258,000 before Twitter deleted the hashtag. But then hours later, Biden cheat pops up at 40,000. All the while, Twitter's attempt to push hashtags like hashtag civil war are falling flat. No one believes the hashtag trends anymore, as the president called out earlier in the week. Now, while we know that the deep state is panicking about all this, and they're definitely panicking in regards to the actions of Sidney Powell as the floodgates of evidence are pouring in, I believe they're most concerned for the president's full pardon of General Flynn. Welcome back, General Flynn. Get fired up! I mean, there, there's no enemy that's unbeatable. Where you don't want to be predictable as to what you're going to do. This is warfare. Lock her up. That's right. Lock her up. the advantage in life, in business, and in wartime goes to the competitor that does not flinch and does not broadcast his game plan. I'm here tonight as a determined American who loves our country. And my message to you is very clear. Wake up, America, on this day. We start the beginning of a new American century, a time when we turn our heads forward with persistent and relentless focus on protecting our communities, our families, and our country with our feet firmly planted on the ground and by holding individuals accountable for their actions does he have the temperament to be commander-in-chief? Yeah, no doubt. I think the American people are much, much smarter than you know. We should clearly define our enemies, face them head-on, and then defeat those that seek 
to threaten our country and our way of life. If we lose freedom here, there is no place to escape to. This is the last stand on Earth. Now, this full pardon removes the gag order, and we know that this terrifies the deep state. As our favorite Anon asked, who knows where the bodies are buried? As Pepe Lives Matter tweeted, pain is coming. They just set free the man who tweeted this. Which brings me to post 970. Done in 30, house cleaning, White House secured, final stage. Now, we still don't know if 30 is a marker, or if it refers to a time frame in which the storm may take place. But we do know one thing, and that's that nothing can stop what is coming and that the best is yet to come. Folks, I want to thank you for watching this report. Please like, subscribe, and share before I wrap this report and play the final video. If you want to support my work, please make a donation through PayPal. Even if it's just a dollar, it goes a long way. I do not make any money from monetization. These videos are not monetized whatsoever, which means I do rely on your support. The PayPal address is in the description. It takes a lot of late nights and long hours researching to prepare these reports. Fortunately, I have a secret weapon, CBD infused coffee from if you only knew to CBD.com. I found personally that it gives me more focus and energy to start my day with a cup of CBD infused coffee, which is made with a nutrient dense superfood called chaga mushrooms. Chaga contains a wide variety of vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. Chaga is also known to slow the aging process, lower cholesterol, prevent and fight cancer, lower blood pressure, support the immune system, and fight inflammation. Plus, it's infused with the highest quality CBD oil. Now, if you don't drink coffee, that's okay because there's all kinds of other amazing CBD infused products, including hair care, skin care, treats your pets, and I'm naming just a few. Another favorite of mine is the coffee berry extract, which also gives you a little boost of energy and only the highest quality level CBD oil. Now, how do I know it's the highest quality CBD? Well, we show you the data. Unlike the CBD, you might find at some random corner of the internet, which is just some poor quality watered down version. We present you all the data so you can see the potency and testing before you buy so you know this is the genuine real deal. Check out if you only do cbd.com or check the link below. Now, I usually like to end with a humorous video, but today I want to play something different to inspire you. You now have confirmation of what the Kraken actually means and now know who is behind the president, the proud men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces. So instead of making you laugh, I want you to be brave because our time as patriots is almost at hand. And where we go one, we go all. My name is Richard, and this is If You Only Knew. This is a very different administration than the United States has had in the past. Do not underestimate us, and do not try us. We will defend our common security, our shared prosperity, and our sacred liberty. We will not be intimidated. America does not seek conflict or confrontation, but we will never run from it. If the righteous many do not confront the wicked few, then evil will triumph. Anyone who doubts the strength or determination of the United States should look to our past, and you will doubt it no longer. History is filled with discarded regimes that have foolishly tested America's resolve. We will not permit America or our allies to be blackmailed or attacked. We will not allow American cities to be threatened with destruction. We will stop radical Islamic terrorism because we cannot allow it to tear up our nation and indeed to tear up 
the entire world. The time for excuses is over. Now is the time for strength. If you want peace, you must stand strong at all times.